definitely. So thank you, Professor Milanopoulos, for coming on the Psychotic Preservation Group today. It's great to have you. It's great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. So the first question that I ask um, almost all my guests is what inspired you to enter the archaeological field? It sounds silly, but I would say my mother. Mm -hmm. um, she used to take me to museums, so I started very early looking yeah. at the ancient artifacts, mm -hmm. and then it grew up to become love, and then it became study, and now it's it's my profession. <laughs> yeah. So everything started with my mother. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Same with me, I have to say. So, uh, what does your current work entail now? At Colombia, uh, at, at Colombia, and also in general, I know you work on the on 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 Kiestos project. Oh, um, okay. So um, let me start with um, my work at Colombia. So, like every professor, I have to teach. Mm. I have to take care of my undergraduate students. I have a couple of graduate students who need advising. Uh, there is a lot of administration, and uh, of course, research. Yeah, this is uh, together with teaching research is uh, the fun part. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you address the on Hestos excavation. Mm -hmm. For the last couple of years, we are doing study, and uh, we hope to be able to publish either a volume or a series of articles next year. Mm -hmm. And uh, my idea was from the very beginning, and this is what we are doing right now, that the publication will. Uh, materialize with uh, the support of my graduate students who were part of the excavation team. So we uh, will bring outsiders, so-called outsiders, um, into the publication process, but um, the main work will be done by my now former graduate students. Most of them have finished their PhDs, their professors themselves, mm -hmm. so that it stays, so to say, within the family. Mm -hmm. the, the people who did the actual digging will be also the people who will publish the materials. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. And in general about your field work, and this could be related to on to Onchestos or Onchestos economy or um any of your field work in, in your past, what is some of the highlights? Highlights. I consider everything a highlight because mm -hmm. I I really love what I'm doing. But um, from the Orchestos excavation in the first year, 2014, when we when we found a completely preserved sword, mm -hmm. and not because of the find, mm -hmm. which is in itself exceptional, but uh, because I could see the joy of the students, mm -hmm. yeah. some of them for the first time on a dig and... Uh, being confronted with with a find like that that's uh, that, that's an amazing experience yeah to see the love that you have for what you are doing yeah uh, mm -hmm. all of a sudden in the eyes of your of your own students yeah, yeah. so that was that was really an amazing experience so that that infamous sword that we found in 2014 yeah mm -hmm. uh, from previous Excavations, I would say my very first one in 1990 with Professor Sakelarakis in a Minoan building on Crete. Mm. And then I would say the whole excavation was, was truly an experience. It was my first dig. He was an amazing excavator, an amazing teacher. He died, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And he trusted me very quickly with the excavation of an entire room. Mm -hmm. And it uh, and it proved to be one of the most difficult trenches in that year. Yeah, but uh, he never left me out to dry. So he was there to guide me, help me, and it was really a very helpful experience. I learned a lot, and mm -hmm. many of the things that I learned with him back in 1990. It's a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. uh, I I still use in my own excavation. Mm -hmm. I owe him a lot. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It's always great to have a professor or a mentor or that. Helps mm. you through your studies for sure. Um, so I I had another question for you, and this is relating to your book, right? Um, you obviously wrote a book, and that'll be linked in the description for those viewers um who want to read or order the book. And I just wanted to ask you how your if you could first off explain a little bit about what the book is about, 
And then later on, um, if you could talk about the writing and the publishing process and how that went. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, let us clarify the book is in German. Yeah. Yes, yes. So I don't think many people will buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah but <laughs> it's always good to... Yeah. Yes, yes, I understand. Um, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> so... Uh, I'll, I'll buy it. I'm 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 not great at German yet, but I'm I'm like intermediate level, so okay. a few things. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So, um, it's about the sanctuaries and cults of Poseidon mm -hmm. on the Peloponnese, and um, uh, why and how it started. Um, I was interested in religion archaeology. I still am. That's why I'm excavating a Poseidon sanctuary on Hestos is a Poseidon sanctuary, by the way. So my life makes a circle. I started with Poseidon. I'm going back to Poseidon mm -hmm. uh, at a different place, but um, that's relevant. Um, he was so disliked and uh, misunderstood. So I thought perhaps dedicate a book or a study to this um, character this divine character and see how it goes yeah so i was i was intrigued by yeah by everything that i was reading the bibliography back then that um he's a little bit boring he's a little bit one-sided mm -hmm. he has a temper uh as, as a mythological figure so i thought okay i i like difficult figures <laughs> as as a person so I thought I could I could really study him, yeah. And there was not much out there when I started uh, doing my research. There was an old book um, by Fritz Schahmeyer, mm -hmm. um, which was problematic in my view. Uh, Schahmeyer had um, very interesting, if I may put it um, politely, ideas mm -hmm. about race. Mm -hmm. So, and those ideas found uh, their way into his in his into his approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there was really not much out there that was really looking into the character, the worship, the archaeology of cult surrounding this god. Yeah. And I started with the Peloponnese, and I stopped with the Peloponnese because the material was so um, so broad. Um, because we have uh, many excavations, we have literary sources, we have Pausania. So I thought uh, focusing on, on the Peloponnese would give me the opportunity to create a more holistic uh, image of who this divine figure actually is. And I was rewarded. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Before I started, everyone would say Poseidon C, and that was it. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, my work showed that he's... Ex he's Associated with earthquakes, with uh, horses, uh, horse keeping, horse training. Um, he is someone who is uh, protecting cities, mm -hmm. who is protecting tribes, communities. So I was uh, able to show, I hope, yeah, mm -hmm. that uh, he's a much more complex divine character and that he deserved actually uh, an entire study. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds very interesting, for sure. And for the German readers, uh, that'll be in, that'll certainly be in the description of this episode. And so moving on to, uh, obviously, the the goal of this organization is to um, further preservation efforts, correct? And um, in your own work, right? And with Onchiestas, 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 I'm sorry, I keep putting the tone in the wrong place. And um, any other of your field work, um, what do you do and your team do to preserve to make sure that the culture you work with is preserved? And I know that's a tough question. <laughs> it is a tough question because it is a very complex subject, mm -hmm. very complex topic. Mm -hmm. So at my own excavation, uh, we cannot do much at the moment because we're still working. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the cultural preservation should start already by the way you are digging. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that, I try to explain to my students that the uh, excavation process is already a destruction. Yeah, so mm -hmm. we're we are destroying a context. Yeah, that was created over hundreds and thousands of years. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we need to be extremely careful 
uh, while we are excavating. So it's really not, um, I call it the Indiana Jones approach. Yeah. So it's everything about the find and the golden objects and the bronze ones and the beautiful sculpture and the amazing architecture. Of course, this is all important. Yeah. But we need to be very careful while we are unearthing these objects. So, as I said before, for me, preservation starts with the actual process of excavating. Yeah. yeah. Even if it means being slower than anticipated. And I have to confess that we are slow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we are extremely careful. Anything, everything needs to be cataloged, everything needs to be uh, photographed so that we can more or less, yeah. Mm -hmm. We are not perfect. More or less reconstruct how we reached that object, that layer, yeah, and um, without losing information that is impossible then to reconstruct. Yeah, when something like that is over, and as I said, our project is not over. Yeah, you need to find a, at least in my eyes, yeah. So this is my view. You need to find a balance between preserving a site. Uh, and turning it into something like Disneyland. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Too much uh, reconstruction, um, I think, can be a problem. Yeah? It makes a site more accessible yeah, to, the, to the public, but at the same time, it's uh, something that needs to be done very carefully and after very careful uh, study of, of the evidence. Mm -hmm. Um, sites that are doing that in 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 an absolutely magnificent way, yeah, are aphrodisias, yeah, in in Turkey, an excavation that is directed by Professor Bert Smith in Oxford, mm -hmm. and I would say Messene in Greece, yeah, an excavation directed by Professor Petros Themelis. There you can see this nice balance of doing something but not doing too much to to reconstruct the past yeah and i'm an archaeologist so i'm focusing now on materials yeah but um i think the preservation of immaterial culture is equally important yeah mm -hmm. i told you that i started my career as an excavator at my god at the age of 20 uh with yanis akelarakis yeah mm -hmm. and um I remember he was very attentive to the landscape. He was very attentive to the people living around the excavation, to their traditions. I remember a wonderful night yeah, in one of those mitata. These are these stone structures on Crete yeah, where they preserve cheese, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, where we sat around the fire and a Cretan musician played music. Yeah? So I think the immaterial culture yeah, is is also part of what we should be preserving. Yeah, and yeah. again, we need to remember as excavators, yeah, that someone lived, yeah, on those sites until we came and started digging. Yeah, yeah. and they had their own culture. Yeah, I remind you of the the destruction of the uh, Ottoman and Byzantine. Uh, traditions on the Athenian Acropolis so that everything can become purely Greek again. Yeah, uh, We don't do that anymore. Yeah, Let me be fair. But um, uh, preservation, as I said, is a very complex uh, issue. Yeah, It's not really about only about restoring and presenting to the public. Yeah? It's, it's much more. Wow, yeah. Well, thank you for bringing that up about like the both the material and non-material and tangible part of culture, because that's something that I've, I've, I've really been trying to emphasize that um, uh, in a way, the tangible, the material is only a, a representation of the intangible, right? It represents an entire culture um, rather than vice versa. So um, I, I, I wanted to ask one question, right? As you said, preservation is a very complex subject and, and I'm sure there are many challenges that arise when putting it into practice, right? Uh, both maybe both legal, but also practical, right? Um, so how, what are those challenges that in your, in your experience that you have faced? 
And also, how have you been maybe dealt with those challenges? But specifically, I, I just wanted to know, like, what the challenges that you find with preservation are. <laughs> Let's start with the most obvious one. Yeah. yeah. Um, making sure that you have the funds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the processes are extremely expensive, depending mm -hmm. on where you're excavating, what you're excavating. And the next problem is finding the right people to do the work. Uh, you need experts. You really need experts. And they are hard to find. You know? um, <clears throat> Greece, for example, produces far too many archaeologists mm -hmm. and not enough people who can actually work as experts, technical experts, you know? uh, in uh, preservation, conservation, and so on and so forth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the problem starts already with education, yeah? mm -hmm. guiding the right people to the right paths instead of producing, not only in Greece, but in general, instead of uh, producing academics. Yeah? We need those technicians yeah? mm -hmm. uh, who are actually the experts without whom we, can, we, cannot, we cannot do uh, preservation the right way. Yeah. So I would say these are the, the two most important things. Everything else you can you can actually handle. Yeah, you know, dealing with the authorities, mm -hmm. dealing with the site, with dealing with uh, the the population around the area that you're working uh, uh, on. These are things that you can actually manage. But if you don't have the funds and if you don't have the right people to do the work, then uh, all the effort is just a plan or a dream in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean. Thank you so much for answering these questions. And I think what you said about preservation, but in general, what you said was very helpful and very informative to those like me who are <laughs> thank you. interested in, again, preservation and archaeology and in that field. So thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me.